Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we're going to be doing the most requested video on my channel, which is compiling and installing Android on Raspberry Pi. So let's get started. So to tell you the truth, it's actually not hard to compile and install Android onto Raspberry Pi. The whole process is actually more tedious. It's enter a command and then you wait, enter a command and then you wait. Now thanks to the creators over at Raz and if I'm saying that correctly, and I will be leaving a link in the description, they actually have a full walkthrough on how to compile and install everything into a Raspberry Pi. So what we're going to need is a Linux-based machine, whether it's physical or virtual machine on Ubuntu 14.4, that's the distribution that I'll be using. Uh, we're also going to need at least 4 gigs of RAM for compiling and about 100 gigs of space. Alright, so all the resources that I got is from this website, which I'll leave a link in the description below. Now if you follow down a little bit, it's actually got my sources, Raz, and here. Now, uh, going to the GitHub actually has more detail on how to get everything done versus the website itself. Now, if you don't want to compile your own image, you could actually scroll down a little bit more. And for $9, you can actually download the image that he compiled, which is well worth it because it actually takes a lot of time to compile this uh, image. But if you got the time to spare and you want to learn how to compile, you just finish following this guide. Now, after you click here, you'll be presented with this link. And here it basically gives you quick instructions. Refer to source.android.com on how to download it, which is over here. And then it'll give you like ideas on what you need to do. Now, first thing we need to do is set up our compiler environment. Now, if this was a fresh copy of Ubuntu, you're going to need to app get a couple of things. First, you're going to need Java 1.8. Grab a repository from OpenJDK. As soon as you type that in, and hit enter. Again, I'm gonna leave everything in the descriptions below so you're gonna be able to follow all the commands and it's gonna be down there. After you enter that sudo apt-get update, the next step we need to do is install all this. sudo apt-get, you know, flex, blah, 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 etc., etc., and then hit enter. Now I have everything installed already so it's not gonna ask me to install anymore. The next thing we're gonna to need to install which is GCC, ARM, Linux, GNU, I don't know how to say that. Now, it's going to ask me to update it because I installed this a couple of days ago, but I'm good. When you're done with that, the next step is to register yourself using the git config to enter your name and your Gmail account or your Google account. Now, basically, git config, your user email, you know, basically your email at gmail.com or something like that and then the next one would be git config global user dot name and you would put your name in here next I would actually make a development uh, folder so I would do make dir uh, raz and cd raz and and that way I could hold everything in one folder without creating a mess in my main folder Next thing we need to do is actually get the whole repo, which is repo ini-u, and then again, I'll leave everything below. But you can also follow this guide because I just basically copied it from here. As soon as you type that in, it will actually create a quick folder inside. You don't see it now, but you're going to see. Uh, um, if you do that, a little folder called dot repo. So in here, we can cd to dot repo, and then run the next command, which is git clone from there. Now the next step, which will take a very long time, is repo sync. Now this will actually download about 50 gigs of source code into your hard drive. So again, as soon as you run this command, you could leave the computer for, depending on your connection, an hour or two. As soon as you're done downloading everything, you're gonna be ended up in your prompt again. Now the next part of this, you're gonna to have to see the build for Raspberry Pi 3. If you got an Odroid, you could actually build it for Odroid. And if you have a Raspberry Pi 2, you can actually go back up to this link over here, Pi OHD, and he will have the version for Raspberry Pi 2. Now the reason why we're using Raspberry Pi 3 because you have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth controller which will also work. Now after you click that link these are the next steps that it's going to have to actually do. Now we already installed GCC ARM so we can skip this. Now next you want to CD into the kernel RPi. So CD kernel oh 
get out of the repo directory, then cd into kernel rpi. Now in here, they're going to make you move a configuration file. So again, copy and paste this. And it's going to do all these new values and add everything you need to compile your Z image and your DTBS. When this is done, we're going to basically move forward and copy this command. Then it's going to compile. Now, I'm running into errors because I compiled this and I was doing some other stuff, but that is the command that you need to do. Now, moving forward, you're going to have to copy and paste this command. Again, I might run into errors because I was doing something other than this before, and it's going to generate errors. Now, when you're done with that, this is already installed, so you could skip this sudo install step. And this is the only hard part that you're going to have to worry about. So we're going to cd back out into Raspband main directory. Clicking on here, there's actually a few patches that you would have to take care of, which is not hard to do. Again, it's just tedious. Here, if you want to avoid log cat flood, you could add this key in there. If you want to enable GL surface view, you would change this. Avoid screen flashing, you would change this. And enable software video decoder, and that's what you would do over here. Now, I'm going to show you a quick example because I've already done this, so I don't need to do this again, but I'm going to show you a quick example. Now, let's head over to framework slash base and then open GL Java Android surface view, okay? So basically, nano framework you see, base over here, OpenGL, Java, Android, OpenGL, and then there's this file called GL Surface View. So GL, it's case sensitive. Oops, Surface View. Now in here, you're gonna be like, oh, where do I have to edit the file? Now take a look at this, it says line. 976. So we're going to page down and then hit control C halfway through. Now you can see that I'm only on four, line 401 if you look at the bottom. Keep going down 676. Keep going down and I'm hitting control C which will give me the line number. Now the line that I needed to get to was 70, 976. So I got a few more to go and right now I hit line 976 as you can see from here. Now this will look very similar to what we have here. Now you see how there's a minus and there's a plus. You could actually make the patch file by copying and pasting this into a patch and then patching it up, but I'm just showing you how to manually do it. Now the next step is to follow what they did. Remove what they had there, which is the zero and then the 16, and replace it with eight and then 24. And that's what I did. Replace it with eight and then 24. And then do this for the rest of the files or the other files that you have. Like this one just needs you to remove three lines. This one needs you to remove this line. And this one is just a copy and paste of this and add all these lines to there. So you just basically follow the line number, the file, and you know which files you need to edit. As soon as you're done with that, moving forward, it's just a few commands that you need to run. So you're going to have to source build env setup. It does some stuff over there. Launch, launch Raspberry Pi engine. Raspberry Pi 3 engine, and then make. Now this will take, depending on how fast your computer is, hours. I'm saying like it could be four hours, two hours. It's, it's a lot of time. So you would do make, J, and then how many cores you got. So if you got a four core computer, you would do four. If you got a six core, you would do six. If you got two core, you would do two. That would speed up the process a little bit. So as soon as you're done with that, you should be presented with a couple of files. Okay, so moving forward, now while we're waiting for everything to compile, we might as well just create our SD card the way they needed to. Now the easier way is just to use Gparted, which is what I'm going to be showing you. Now if you could get into your graphical environment, that's the easiest way. And then if you're using a virtual machine, if you've seen my previous video, you could actually mount your USB uh, SD card to your virtual machine and then you could do the same process. Now what I'm going to do is sudo Gparted. And you're going to notice that you have a drive right here, and I'm using a 16 gigabyte drive. And what you have to do here is just delete all the old partitions if you have anything there already. 
and confirm that just to make it easier. Then here, the first partition we need is 512 megabytes for boot. And we have to remember to label them the way it's supposed to be labeled, all right? So partition new and new size is going to be 512. And we have to make this a fat 16 and call this boot. Now we have a 516 partition. I mean, 512 megabyte partition. The next one we're going to do is new, another 512. This one you could be anything you want. It's just system drive, and you're going to DD a file over. So whatever file system, it doesn't even matter. Now we're going to name this system add partition new, and here we're going to do another 512 for the cache. Keep this ext4 and call this cache. And then the last partition could be the remaining size, ext4 again, and we're going to call this user data. And there we have our structure. So I'm going to apply everything. Now that's done, we're going to have to make this manage flags and make it bootable. Close. And that's it. We're done with this. Okay, so assuming that you have everything all compiled, we're going to have to DD the system image file. So sudo DD IF and we're going to do out slash target product Raspberry Pi 3 system.img OF, which is output file, to dev SDB2, which is your second partition that you made bs equals 1m. Now this is actually going to copy the 512 megabytes of system partition over to your second partition on your SD card. Alright, now that's all done, we're going to have to create a temporary folder. So I'm going to make it in the same folder that we're working on. So make dir temp, and we're going to sudo mount the first partition. So sdb1 to temp. That way I can copy over files to the first partition. Now, if you're following the instructions, like I was telling you before, basically we're doing this. We're going to cp device brcm boot all of it to tempt. Oop, forgot to do sudo. Then we're going to sudo cp kernel rpi arc arm boot z image over to tempt sudo cp kernel boot z d dts and then bcm 2710rpi3-b to tempt and if i like to type correctly Then we're going to copy the RAM disk. So c sudo cp out target product rpi3 RAM disk into the same folder tempt. All right, now that we copied all the folders to our first boot partition, we could actually take a look at it if you want and go cd tempt. And you're going to see you have all these files in here. Now it, it's Default is on 720 resolution. If you want to modify that and you are familiar with the config file by now, or should be, you can nano config.txt and edit this file to what you want. Like the HDMI mode, I think it was supposed to be like 16 and the frame buffer should be 1920 by 1080. You, you get what I mean. As soon as you modify this, you'll know what I'm talking about. And you're done, basically. Um, the system should be able to boot, and everything else should be working. So let's go check that out. So if this is your first time booting this, it will take actually a very long time. Now, I took the courtesy of actually playing around and installing some apps already. But if you take a look, it's actually pretty quick and responsive. And I'm going into settings. And here, you could actually modify all the settings you want. And if you want to confirm that it's Marshmallow, you could go down to the options and the about. Now, there's actually Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, you could actually use them with this build. From here, I could actually go down all the way, take a look at about phone, 
and you're gonna see that this is indeed marshmallow. 6.0.1 Now hitting F1 and F2 and all that stuff you're gonna see that F1 goes back to home, F2 is the back key. Uh, you're gonna learn these commands, it's actually in the link that I'm gonna leave on the description below. Now in here I actually took the opportunity to install some apps which is Aptoid. Not all apps from the Google Play Store works, uh, it doesn't even show up. So if you want other apps that doesn't show up on Play Store, you're gonna have to install Aptoid. So I would highly recommend doing that. You could also use the web view to connect to your website to get whatever you need to get. So thanks for watching my video. I hope you were able to follow along. Now, I know it wasn't too hard. It was more tedious, like typing in a command and then wait. Now, if you guys have any more questions, you can leave it in the comments below. I'm going to be playing around with this more so you can follow me on Twitter and see more photo updates and everything on what I'm doing. If you haven't done so already, hit that little subscribe button. That will help me a lot. Also, give you notification on when the next video is going to be out. As I say to my nerd cave, hacktail it hurts.